terms of variable sampling, we use where we have a continuous number, uh, where we have a lot of data or information or transaction, uh, where we have to review a, a value or a quantity and to give our opinion on, for example, account receivable, accounts payable uh, values, or we could be looking at the, the number of stocks. So in that case, uh, the best sampling approach is using uh, variable sampling and it is mainly used for substantive testing. In variable sampling, we use both upper and lower limits, which is that the threshold under which we can believe that to what extent it is acceptable to have a deviation and to what extent it is not acceptable to have a deviation accordingly if we have to adjust our sample size. Similar to attribute sampling, the variable sampling size, uh, under that approach, you can determine the sample size based on the confidence level. If you need to have more confidence uh, towards the, uh, towards the um, population of the data, you have to increase the uh, sample size. If the, if the population uh, of the data is huge, then you have to get a bigger sample size. Uh, tolerable misstatements if you are um, if you are less tolerable then you have to increase the sample size if you are more tolerable towards uh, or you are more confident that the data will be good representation of the population then you can reduce your sample size standard deviation again if the uh, if the data has a higher standard deviation which means that the data is dispersed and they are dispersed um, against the average number within the data sets, then you have to increase the size. If the standard deviation is less, that the variability within the data is less, then you can reduce your sample size. Cost benefit analysis is also important because getting that data, reviewing that data it might be costly and time consuming. So you can use the, the value which you will be getting or meeting the objectives after reviewing the data should overweight the cost the benefit it should always over uh, um, overweight the, the cost of obtaining that data reviewing that data there are different approaches within the variable uh, sampling that we can use to determine the, um, the differences between the value in which we are reviewing and the actual recorded amount within the company so we apply variable sample different kind of balances for example the account receivable balance so based on our sampling uh, the obtained um, number of customers which we have obtained and we found that out of 1000 our sample was 100000 customers and within that 100000 customer the account receivables amount is understated by a certain number then we divide that certain number to total number of uh, the total number of customers that we have reviewed and then project it to the total number of population this is this method is called mean per unit estimation we will look this in detail through uh, calculations in the coming slides so do not worry if you do not understand but just to understand that we calculate this in the um, the difference based on per unit and then project it to the total population difference estimation is also similar to that but here we look more at the differences in the in the variation between the uh, actual audited amount and the numbers which are coming and the overall population and then accordingly we try to project not based on the total number of units but to, uh, but a different way through which we we try to project the the, the differentiation on overall uh, population the third approach is about variable sampling uh, is about the ratio uh, estimation in which we just look at the, what is the percentage uh, of the error in in a given sample and then we project that percentage to the overall population 
So here is the uh, example uh, which I would just to show that how we can apply all these three concepts. Uh, so the first uh, few information which we have uh, that the book value which the company has recorded of the overall po population uh, of account receivable is 3.5 million. Uh, out of 3.5 million, we selected 172.5 thousand of uh, amount in our sample to review the customers and check their balances and uh, based on the the balances which we check with that customer of which has uh, which comprises the total amount of those cu uh, customer balances comprise of 172 we came to know that their actual balance is after maybe the customer customer uh, confirmation or through source document that it is basically 168 thousand so which means that they have based on our audit value it is lower than what the company has recorded so the total population was there were 3400 customers however we sample only 150 uh, customers balances so now we will apply to this data uh, the in this scenario to through all three uh, methods First of all, let me tell you that which one is good, which one is bad. It's it, it based on the uh, auditor's judgment. So there is no one way. It is just to give to get an estimation of the gravity of the issue within a population or uh, an audit finding. So you, you can use either of uh, or among any of three um, or use all three and see which one is more suitable to the situation and then you can report your finding based on that calculation. So mean per unit estimation when we are calculating what we will look at that our audit value was 16800,000 for 150 customers. So by that we get it uh, $1120 per customer under value. And then we simply multiply to the total population. Then we get the total population of 3.8 million according to accordingly uh, based on our working. The, the amount is underestimated by $308,000. How? Because when we apply that, uh, that amount to the overall population, we came to know that the in the the book value of the overall um, um, book value of the overall customers should be three point eight million. However, um, it is only provided for three point five million, which means that it is being underestimated by three o eight. So through this calculation, we came to know in the given situation that. Uh, it is being the overall value is being underestimated through different estimation method what we will do we will take 172,000 of value divide by uh, sorry minus 168 which is by which we will get that how much was the difference uh, 4,500 was the difference uh, in 150 sample so we get it a difference of 30 dollars Per sample and then we project that $30 by multiplying to the total population and we get it of by 102% which means that the correct balance of estimation is 3.3 million and overall it give us an overestimation of by the management by 102,000 in their records. The third me method is the ratio estimation basically where we look at 168 was the actual audited value whereas the management has booked in the accounts 172 which becomes like 0.97 percent um, or which become like 97 percent so we look we discount the overall value by uh, by 97 percent and through which we get it like the, the total amount should be um, 3.4 million the, their total account receivables however the management has uh, booked or uh, recorded at 3.5 million which is our estimation by 91,000 so if you look at there is a variation in the number even the understatement or overstatement so therefore you can use your best judgment 
to ensure that which methodology is good because overall at the end of the day these are judgments because you are using your judgment to project that issue on the overall um, population level and obviously when you highlight such kind of a, such kind of audit findings to the management they become more critical they look into more detail in the data there might be possibility that you are not 100 percent accurate but then the management job is to fix the problem our job was to identify the issue and to give a rough estimation because we have a time constraint we have resources constraints so we cannot go to the last digit accuracy we we can aim for but we cannot but the overall objective is that the, the data the or the recovery data is uh, either under or overestimated through different means of um, sampling method and the management has to take the corrective action in order to ensure that they should record the correct amount and and verify those data so you leave it there and the management job is to to justify themselves and to rectify those errors within the record.